Hello and welcome to the third episode of BT's The Future Is Now, the series where we talk to the companies and organisations who are already doing today what we'll all be doing in the future. Now this time round, we're talking about how technology can help an industry as old as farming to transform and evolve. So we're going to go over to our correspondent, Arlene Stewart, who's speaking to David Farquhar, CEO of Intelligent Growth Solutions. Hi, Arlene. Hi, Steph. Yes, I'm here just outside Dundee at IGS. David, what is it you do here? We make the weather, we make climates, we create the ideal conditions to grow food. And can you give me a little bit more information about vertical farming? Yeah, so think about it like cutting a field up, putting it into trays, we stack them nine metres high, we control them through our mobile phone and we grow food on them. I know vertical farming isn't new, so what are you doing differently? We're tackling some of the really big problems when we're powering hundreds of thousands of LEDs, we're ventilating hundreds of thousands of plants and we're taking the labour out, which is what makes it economically viable. So before we get into specifics, why do we need vertical farming? What problems are you solving? So we need to feed ourselves. The world population is estimated to get to about 10 billion by 2050. And through climate change, mainly caused by agriculture, we're making it harder and harder to grow our food. So our job is to build the best technology in the world, supply it to farmers all around the world uh, so that they can grow the crops they really need for the local diets everywhere. Do you see this as running alongside traditional farming or do you think it will replace it? No, it will never take over traditional farming, but it can make traditional farming much more efficient. Thank you very much, David. Back to you in the studio, Steph. Thanks very much, Arlene. Now, to find out what an expert thinks about ingredients grown this way, we spoke to Praveen Kumar, head chef at Tabla Restaurant. There's a saying in, in the chef industry, you know, you talk to ingredients and they talk back to you and there is a combination and you, you together, you create the best dish that you want to create again and again, again and again. Having the local source ingredients also reduces the cost drastically because one, you're dealing directly to the farmers, that means this is no middleman. And then two, he doesn't have to depend on someone else to drop it off, so he can drop it himself. That means it's less cost to us, which is really important to any restaurant right now as we need to save every penny. So it does help using local ingredients, save the economy, save the pennies. Ah, thanks for that, Praveen. That dish looks fab. Uh, you could try it yourself by downloading the recipe from the links at the end of this video. So vertical farms are much more high tech than you'd imagine traditional farms to be. So to find out more about how it works, we're going to talk to Lawrence Ross, who's Chief Product Officer at IGS. Hi, Lawrence. Hi, Steph. Hi, yeah. Can you tell me more about how this technology works then? Yeah, Steph. At IGS, we use artificial intelligence to help us determine how to grow plants in our growth towers. We use machine learning to help us make iterative adjustments to the growing cycle. It's all monitored through a simple web-based app. The whole system is Internet of Things enabled to help us use automation to control the system and to manage it remotely. What's the Internet of Things then? The Internet of Things describes the network of physical objects, things, and they're connected and exchange data with all the devices on the network. For us, the kind of sensors we use are about controlling the climate. This is things like temperature, humidity, lighting, gas composition, pH levels, nutrient levels, all the things that crops need to grow. You must be collecting so much data, Lawrence. Where's it all going? We send the data to the cloud from devices called programmable logic controllers. This helps us remove all the IT layers in the farm. These IT layers can often cause downtime and they also help us keep the cost lower. You must be relying on a strong internet connection then, I guess. The uh, internet connection is, is critical in our business. So tell me what happens then, Lawrence, in worst case scenario, you lose that connection. Well, with 5G, this should never happen. The redundancy and backup that exists in 5G almost guarantee connectivity. It's so interesting. I love it. Thank you so much, Lawrence. Thank you, Steph. So we've heard about the technology, but now we want to talk a bit about how it helps to reduce the impact on the planet. So to do that, we're going to head back up to IGS, where Arlene's with David. Arlene. 
Thanks, Steph. So, David, one of the big benefits of your method of farming is it can be installed anywhere, can't it? That's right. Provided we've got a reliable source of renewable energy, a wireless connection like 5G, a wired connection to the internet like broadband, we can put it anywhere. And we love to use brownfield or unusable land really close to the point of consumption so we can collapse those food miles. As well as producing great tasting food, there's lots of other benefits, aren't there? Yeah, certainly in terms of sustainability and climate change. So we can grow 15 times more food here per square meter than you can in the best greenhouse. And at the same time, we would use 1 20th of the amount of water you would in a greenhouse. So we can reduce waste as well. We can collapse the food miles and we have zero emissions. And that's really important, that final point, David. It is. I think everybody now expects business to clean its act up. Uh, to be more environmentally responsible, uh, but also to do a great job and grow this fantastic food. Well, thank you very much, David. It certainly looks as though the future is looking much greener for farming. So, David, before I let you go, if there was one piece of advice you could give to businesses, large or small, what would it be? The world is going digital. If you can digitize something tens of thousands of years old like agriculture, you can digitize any industry on the planet. David, thank you very much. Back to you in the studio, Steph. Thanks, Arlene. Lawrence, let me ask you that question now. What would your advice be? I think businesses of all sizes will have more and more data to process. So it's important to start future-proofing your business now as it's hard to catch up if you get left behind. Wise words, Lawrence, thank you very much. I just want to say thanks to all of our guests, to Arlene and Praveen, and of course, Lawrence and David, for showing us all how the future is now for IGS. Now, if you want to find out more about any of the topics we've discussed, then just follow the links at the end of the video. You can even download a recipe from Praveen's restaurant. See you next time.